his target staggered back. Cordus turned his footing and followed the right cross with a left to the man's unprotected gut, driving all the breath out of him in an explosive guttural grunt. The man bent over, gasping, and Cordus followed with a knuckle-splitting right-handed uppercut that knocked his opponent right off his feet. The force of the blow sent the man flying backward. Pocket knife, kerchief, one shoe, and a spray of blood parted company with him before he even landed. Cordus would not have minded if the offender had cracked his skull on one of the tree trunks behind him, but luck was with the wretch, and he landed instead on his back, not his head. Crumpling onto the soft, uneven ground padded by decades of fallen leaves was akin to falling on a pile of bricks covered by a few pillows. Uppercuts always work. They're so satisfying, too. Cordus knew better than to fight bare-knuckled, but when he saw the man's expression, drawing his sword just didn't come to mind. He could instantly read the guilt on the offender's very punchable face, and didn't even break stride throwing the first punch. I love this rage. I want to stay inside this fury as long as I can, and just keep punching. I can kick him, I can throw him, I can snap his joints, I can punch down. And why not? I'm in power. What's anyone going to do about it? Tell me no? The Empire taught me early on, obedience comes from threat of harm. Anyone'll think twice about crossing me once they see me pound some criminals to paste. I have the authority. I can beat down whoever I want to. Corda sucked in air between his clenched teeth. I want that so much. Cordus stood over the offender, instinctively stepping into a well-trained boxing stance. Cordus's vision was still fogged with rage. His hands clenched at the ready, dripping blood and starting to throb. Cordus pulled in his forearms to cover his vitals and flexed his shoulders, just daring the fool to stand up. They have no idea the kinds of rage I keep hidden from them. The fool was in no shape to stand up. He rolled partly over on his side, doubling into a semi-fetal position, wheezing, there was no other sound but that, and the tense breathing of the crowd that the fight had drawn. They don't know how lucky they are with me. They haven't seen what I've seen. The downed man's face was covered in quickly purpling bruises, smears of blood, and a lacerated cheekbone. His body probably looked the same. The way he winced with each intake of breath suggested that there might be a broken rib or two, and he certainly was going to be painfully aware of his sins every time he inhaled or exhaled for at least a week. 